All right, folks, this is it. We are here with Victor, one of my YouTube uh, subscribers, and uh, we just gonna take us fishing on the Cowlitz River. We're gonna see if we can catch some salmon, maybe some uh, steelhead, and uh, spend a quiet evening catching some fish here. So we have three lines in the water, right? We're gonna do this is called uh, this is called trolling, right? Trolling. Sorry? This is called what? What is the technique? Trolling. Called? Trolling. We're trolling with the uh, plug. It's a plug. Uh, crankbait called wiggle warts. Wiggle warts. And we have three rods and lines in there, and uh, we're gonna go at a low speed, maybe like half mile an hour or so. The sneaky place to come up on their prey is from behind and a little bit under. So that's, you want to give them what makes them comfortable. So you want to be not at the same level, actually. You want it to be a little bit up here so they can get them that way. So it's why it's so important to not be in the rocks. And I noticed most of the guides were using this. And so I had a chance to talk to one. I said, why are you using that bright line? Isn't that scaring the fish? And they said, well, first of all, if Fishing line scared fish, they never swim in nets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a valid point. Yeah. Um, the other thing is is that this color reds disappear in water yeah. quicker. Okay. And then lastly, the fish are coming from downstream upstream. Now it'd be more effective if we were going downstream. Maybe even this way, we can be going by them or whatever, but typically they're going to come to that plug before they're ever going to see the line anyway. Mm -hmm. So, it's really not an I issue. see. This is the ninth month, the 28th day, and we caught coho, which is silver. So this is a silver jack. So Victor and I are going to cook a catch and cook session with the salmon that we caught. Well, what kind of salmon you want to tell the camera? We've got a small coho, we've got a full-size coho, and we have sockeye. Sockeye. So we're going to show you guys how, if the camera wants to pan around, this is uh, kind of Victor's little garden here. End of the season all going out, but yeah. yeah. So we're gonna basically show you guys a little bit of how his garden looks like. We got some fresh herbs here. We're gonna uh, harvest some thyme. And uh, I'm gonna okay, hold this. We're gonna cut out some thyme here and uh, get some of the thyme here. And we're gonna use it to cook some of the salmon. We're gonna do a mayonnaise and salmon thyme dish here on the Weber smokers that Victor has. It's gonna be fantastic. And uh, we're also gonna do a little bit of surf and turf. We're gonna see if we can cook some steaks also. Do a little bit of California tri-tip because uh, we are in Washington state. We want Victor to be able to experience some California style cuisine. So for herbs, we still have sage if you need it. Sage, okay, what else? Rose, different rosemary. Okay, rosemary is good for the steak. So let me, let me cut some rosemary for the steaks here. Steaks here. Orange Italian flag. Mint. Here. Basil. All the herbs ready to make a fantastic meal here by with Victor's place at the Cowlitz River, right? Cowlitz River. So we are gonna take you through a little walk through our campsite kitchen, right? So Victor has a kind of outdoor area here. We're gonna do cooking so that way you don't gonna get everything in, inside a trailer. Uh, we want to show his cutting board here. He's got a beautiful cutting board here, ready to go. We're going to do the final plating here. Uh, Victor has this special Weber. I don't, uh, you want to tell, tell the camera a little bit about this Weber that's no longer being made, this thing here? I don't know what the name of it is. I've seen a few of them, but I love this more than any other Weber because it flips back, so it's out of your way, left, right. You have tables on both sides, and it's still really lightweight, so I can throw this in the pickup and take it to people's places campgrounds and we can 
cook up all kinds of stuff. So I wish that they would bring this back. Okay. But and then on the table here, uh, we have a little prep table. We're gonna have some slap your daddy rub. We're gonna have a little bit of mayo, a bunch of herbs. I'm gonna show Victor how to make uh, some slap your daddy ribs. We've got uh, different kinds of salmon. We're gonna have him show you how you're gonna fillet. I'm gonna show you guys a whole bunch of stuff that you can do for outdoor cooking. You don't need a lot of equipment. All you need is a tent, some shade, and some good friends, and some good food from the bounty of Mother Nature. All right, this is called a Jack Silver Salmon, Coho Salmon. It's called a Jack because it's an immature fish, so it's, it is on the small side. An adult would be bigger. I like to cut behind this fin, which will stay put, along the line of the head, just kind of behind the gill cover. So we cut down till we fill the spine. Then what I like to do is we have the very top. I like to cut in just behind that, just on the one side. So I'm trying to come along the top and slide down along the spine. We are cutting through ribs, that's all right. Now I'm gonna flip it over. We're going down, and again, we're waiting, going down to feel to that spine. Uh -huh. Once we get to the spine, and you see how we stayed just on this side of the spine. Now this time, the other we're gonna go on just the other side. Just how we cut down just this side of the spine, we're gonna cut down just this side of the spine. And then you're just gonna run along the edge of run the spine. Run along the edge, yep. So that it's, the meat is on top and the bones are on the bottom. Mm -hmm. When we cook this, we wanna be careful about how much of the thin stuff we're cooking at the same time as this. Normally, and what I like to do here, is actually trim, get this, Trim this off here and here. We'll cook this piece separate, separate. because it's going to cook so fast, it's so thin. Um, and <coughs> what I'm going to do now is this other rib cage. Uh -huh. So we get it started. <clears throat> and we start to work underneath it. So, what we have here is a chimney full of Kingsford charcoal on a Weber chimney. And we got this fire started by lighting a, uh, it's a paraffin cube on the bottom of it. <clears throat> and then just waiting about 20 minutes or so. So Victor, just to FYI, right? You notice how the inside is so shiny. Mm -hmm. So when you cook with a Weber Smoky Mountain the first time, you're going to get a <coughs> phenomenon called infrared reflectivity. That means that light is going to bounce like electromagnetic radiation on the inside. Mm -hmm. What that will do is it will cause the pit to overheat. So that's normal. So once you cook a few times on a Weber Smoky Mountain, the Weber Smoky Mountain is going to calm down and you're going to be able to cook normally on it. But for the first few cooks, while the inside is very shiny, uh, you're going to have some challenges with the temperature control. But rest assured, the Weber Smoky Mountain, once the inside gets kind of dull, it's going to cook fantastic. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove the pin bones of the salmon. And a nice little trick is to lay them over a bowl. Now these little flays are so small, it's a little bit harder, but see when it's like this, <coughs> you can't see the pin bones. As soon as we lay it over, wow. see how they suddenly spring out. So now you can see them, you don't even have to play around with uh, trying to um, feel for them. Once you get down to the tail area, there's no more pin bones. Mm, okay. So when people are freaking out, it's like, you know, all you need to get down to is about this much. You don't have to do the whole thing. So you can be a little bit more patient. So for the first recipe, we're gonna do a simple barbecue sauce and chicken wrap. So I'm gonna put some barbecue sauce on this thing here. This one here. Sprinkle some on. Sprinkle, so go to the yeah, other yeah, one. No, no, this is fine, this is fine. A little higher, a little higher. Yeah. A little bit more, a little bit more. Second one is let's put some mayo on this thing. All right, I'm gonna use uh, some sour cream onion. Looks nice. <clears throat> and any flavor is good. Whatever, whatever flavor you like, it's all good. And you can always do this at campsite, uh, tailgate, or your friend's potluck. So it's just simple recipes. Cook on a cedar plank. We're gonna show you guys how to cook some salmon on a cedar plank. This one is the uh, coho. Coho. We found some coho in Fred Myers, and this is the sockeye. Sockeye, and this one is the coho again, but this is the one that was caught. Go caught, and then tell them what what this is. We're gonna try to show them what this is here. Sperm sack. They didn't hear you louder. Sperm sack. 
So we're gonna do another one here with a little bit more of the rub sauce here. And then let, let's, let's apply a little bit of herbs on it. You have so much herbs here, right? So we have a little bit of parsley, a little bit of um, rosemary. Uh, you also have something very special called the uh, orange mint. Orange mint. Okay, throw some orange mint here, make a little herb. Salmon here with the, with the uh, sockeye. The last one, <laughs> let's do a little Asian style with a little bit of uh, soy sauce. And let's do a little bit of chili. Okay, a little bit of soy here. So, do a little bit of soy and lemon. Uh, let's get some chili on it. Uh, it's gonna be a spicy night tonight. Okay, and then uh, let's get some of the chives from your garden here. Let me chop up some chives. Jalapeno, okay, let's put the jalapeno also. Let's do a really spicy Asian version of this. Let me cut it up. Okay. Okay, cool. Okay, and let's, let's, let's do a little bit of a, a chicken rub on this one here. on okay so uh, Victor's gonna flip the steaks here this is the tri-tip of course uh, we can't come to Washington State and not cook tri-tip for Victor so this tri-tip just has the sniper daddy rub with some garlic powder uh, and then it's super good and then we have some uh, uh, just a ribeye and a New York strip which is what uh, you know Victor likes so we cook him the steak it looks beautiful, look at that. Because we're running the uh, thing at 400 degrees. Okay, 88 yeah. degrees. Not close. 95, yeah. okay, cool. You can, you can, you can tell. Okay, yeah. Let's, okay yeah. Let's, let's close it. Can we some more? Carrie, that looks so good. Alright. Give you a platter. Never will this platter ever have this <laughs> much beautiful food on it. Hang on, let me place my... Uh, this is what we came to Washington State for. So, uh, thanks to Victor, my YouTube subscriber, we got a chance to do some really good fishing, and uh, we got a chance to cook up a storm. So, Victor, I'll, I'll kind of tell you guys what we have here. So, you like New York strip? We have a Angus New York strip here. We got a perfectly cooked ribeye. We have some California style tri-tip. We got the uh, fish we caught today, and that was the baby. Coho, coho, Co baby coho, right? Cooked with uh, two ways, with the uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, syrup and barbecue sauce and a little bit of mayo, the and herbs. herbs. Here's the testicles. I'm sorry, not the testicle, the sperm sack, right? And then this one is the four salmon. Now, do you remember what we did? Uh, which is with this is the sea, right? Sea. This is the coho, yep. And that is the sockeye. A little bit of garlic bread, a little bit of grilled vegetables, and a little bit of grilled peppers, ready to go. So, Victor. I want you to eat it on camera and then tell me how it tastes. Huh. All right, we have a XT Mac KCBS Master Judge. She cannot be revealed, but uh, she's gonna taste it. Okay, so this is the first one. Is the what? Coho, coho cooked with the uh, rub. Good. Tender. Tender. Mm -hmm. That's the coho with the barbecue yeah. sauce and chicken rub. So this is the one with soy sauce and a little bit of uh, chili from your garden. A little bit of lemon, lemon on it. Much more flavorful. Much more flavorful. Yeah. Gorgeous. I'm gonna eat it with the uh, jalapeno. jalapeno on it. Good. You can taste some, some heat, but it's not it, the heat isn't there, but the flavor is, which I think is perfect. I still feel that the um, sockeye is leaner than the coho, but I feel like there's a lot more flavor to it. If you cook sockeye without a bunch of stuff, keeping it on the simple part, yeah. you can taste a nutty flavor to it, which. I don't know of any other salmon that has that. Mayo and uh, a little bit of uh, green. You can taste the smokiness. Oh yeah? Yeah, because it's cooked on a plank. It's wonderful. So far, this is my favorite. So simple, right? Just two, mm -hmm. two items. Good barbecue rub, a little bit of mayo, and a little bit of crunched up. For potato chips, any kind of potato chips you like. I think a little bit of salt would help. A little bit of salt? Okay, cool. A little sea salt. salt. A little sea salt. Yeah. Kosher salt. Donna's moving over to now the uh, sockeye. And this one is the done done with the barbecue sauce. So this is gonna be a little sweeter. Herbs, herbs, yeah, lots of lots of herbs from um, Victor's Garden. Putting that as my second best. Second this best. is still number one. Okay, all right. So you, so you these two, it. I'm kind of torn. torn. Oh. Okay, so number one, number two, right? Master just going back for a second taste test to see. Okay, I got to test says. something about this again. Though. She oh. picks the she picks the uh, coho as number one. Mm -hmm. Sockeye as number two. Okay, so we have a kind of a tie here. So I'll, I'll do the final taste test and see. It, it needs to be more pointed out though. They're all really good. They're all. You know, so just because one's the best and one's 
the worst. It's the it shouldn't be called worse. It's just not as good as. I still order it. If you I still order all, all four, right? All um, four. I think that they're just all different. So um, this is my number one, and I have no number two. Oh wow! This is like stop coho coho really? with the barbecue sauce <coughs> and the chicken rub, and that's it, right? That's that's your number number uno. So let's eat Junior now, the one that was caught in the Cowlitz River today. This is the coho salmon cooked kind of the same way. So I'll let you guys taste it. This Parcel, one is the yeah. uh, rub barbecue and sauce. barbecue sauce, and this is the le mayo and a little bit of rub. <coughs> okay. So both have my chicken rub on it, but one has uh, mayo, one has barbecue sauce as the stickiness, as a schmear. Oh, so it has bones. a little bit more salt to it, so I appreciate it. We should note that the skin is on in all of these. Well, this is this is the winner. It's never been frozen. We caught it today. Super fresh. It's um, it's tender. It's juicy. Okay, so uh, coho wins or sockeye? What do you think? The way that they were cooked. I'm going with the coho today. Coho, good. Okay. Um, I know that individually, again with with very little to nothing, the coho has a uh, the sockeye has a different flavor. But as soon as you start putting things on, it's so subtle you lose it. Today, with the way these were done, uh, the coho. Coho. All right, Donna, what do you think? Uh, I think the coho today. Coho, coho today. Coho yeah. So today, coho wins. Fish wise, you guys nailed it. Let, let's move over now and judge the meat. Master Just Donna and Victor have done their job of eating up the different sockeye and coho versus the fresh. So without a doubt, I can tell you that this fish is special. This has something that this doesn't have. They're both great flavor. But when you eat fresh fish caught today, the same day, there is a springiness that's hard to describe. But when you bite into the meat, you can actually taste you know, the, the best word I have is you can taste the vitality of the fish. It was alive and jumping in the water in the morning. These fish have been caught a while ago. They may have been, you know, kind of frozen and thawed. But when you eat fresh fish, it doesn't really matter what you do with it. You can cook it simply or cook it with some sauce and some rub. But when you eat fresh fish, there is a certain springiness to the meat. Well, the cell walls haven't been broken through. Yeah. Okay, the cell walls. Okay, my, my biotech scientist has told me the cell walls have not been broken. So the taste is absolutely amazing. Uh, and there's nothing to compare. If you want to cook fish, come up to Washington or Oregon. Mm -hmm. Catch it yourself. Get a good guy like Mr. Victor here. Take you around. <laughs> my YouTube subscriber. And it's amazing that how uh, my little YouTube channel has you know created so many new relationships, so many new friendships, and more importantly, so many different memories. And I'm gonna, and take that gonna, one. Eat, gonna eat my piece here. <laughs> Please like, subscribe, and share. And, and thank you so much for joining me for this really special episode of me and Donna heading out to visit Victor in Washington State to catch and cook fish on the Cowlitz River. So until the next episode. We'll see you next time. So one thing I forgot to eat was the, what do you call it, the testicle? What is it? The sperm sack. Sperm sack. Okay, the sperm sack. So nobody wants to eat the sperm sack. So Harry, of course, will have to take one for the team. Uh, I'm going to eat the uh, sperm sack from the coho salmon that I caught this morning here. And uh, uh, let's see here. All right, let me tell you how it tastes like here. It has a milky kind of consistency. Kind of, uh, I don't know, uh, it, is, it kind of like it tastes like raw fish roll. Uh, if you ever had eaten fish eggs, we really, really fine fish eggs. This is how it tastes like. So my first time eating a fresh uh, salmon sperm sack is pretty good. Um, for those of you who are very, very adventurous, this is not bad eating. So when you gut the salmon, you saw how Victor did it. Save the sperm sack and cook it for your, for your best friends, okay? I, I like it, you may not, but you know, that's why you come to my channel, I eat stuff like that, that maybe uh, an Andrew Zimmerman would eat. So uh, there you have it. Harry has tasted the sperm sack of the coho salmon.